All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of ST Must See Comics of the Week. Sorry we didn't get one out last week. Some technical difficulties prevent that from happening. Mostly Memorial Day. That was the technical difficulties. Comics showed up late. It was. That's a thousand percent <laughs> yeah. what happened. All right, so we've got some cool comics that came out today. So, giving you a heads up. So, we're going to start with the new Star Wars. Yay, Star Curse Wars and... I can't say this. It's the Black Wookiee from the Boba Fett show it's three different stories of encounters that the main characters from four five and six have had with this guy he became a fan favorite during the book of boba fett people really liked him we're like hey give us backstory so there's a comic with him and ben when luke's about 10 uh there's one of his interaction with uh, Han and Leia, it seems to be after episode five. There's also a Mon Calmari that's got Grievous' body, which is very interesting. I want to know more about that guy. Give and me, then, give me a five issue series on the background of that guy. Yeah. And then the third comic's got some lizard people that I don't know what their race is um, and their interaction with him, too. He, uh, this guy is a disgraced Wookiee because he used his claws in combat, and that's not allowed. You're not allowed to use your claws, it's bad. It makes you a savage. Evil claw, man. So he bad. Is Glove Shadow in that comic? Uh, there's like seven of the Glove Shadows. Okay, sounds good. Making sure that uh, we get our representation. First up on my side, uh, we've got the Jane Foster and the Thor, Mighty Thor, uh, issue number one, with this beautiful white, mostly white cover. Uh, it is it is uh, Jane Foster uh, kind of rejecting the call of Thor, of the hammer, um, but also she, she kind of has to eventually, because otherwise everything dies. So... Um, Thor has gone missing. Uh, some evil entity has made a deal with the Dark Elves to assault Asgardian. Asgard. To assault Asgard. That's what they're called. And uh, Lady Sif as Heimdall and Beta Ray Bill as the Master of War recruit Jane Foster with the hammer and try to fight back the invasion on Asgard before all is lost. But first, they must find Thor. Uh, but they have, to, they have to find him in order. So, I don't know how well that ties into my comic! Uh, we got Thor, or it's Banner of War issue 4! So we're continuing this with this Banner of War stuff. I'm not having to wait very long about it. So, uh, spoilers. End of last issue. Uh, Hulk exploded. And the amount of gamma radiation he put out should have killed everybody. But Thor's not human. So Thor became a Hulk. It's Thor, but he's Hulk. Yes. And, um... Banner, along with Odin, who exists inside of Banner, tried to have to try to stop Thor Hulk from destroying everything. And Lady Sif, who is Heimdall, is like, now nah, we'll pull him back to, to Asgard. And he willingly breaks the Bifrost. It doesn't seem ideal. No. Yeah. And then uh, at the end, you have um, Odin makes Thor worthy. And there's a there's a. So you have Thor, Hulk, and Hulk Thor? Yeah, you have Thor, Hulk, and Hulk Thor fighting each other. Interesting. This Interesting. is just a, a, a ridiculous comic. And Sounds fun. It's a lot of fun, a lot of smash. Yeah. And uh, we'll see if Thor gets cured by the end of the next issue. Next up in the line of Spider-Man and Spider-Man adjacent comics that I've got here, we've got The Amazing Spider-Man, issue number three. Uh, this one is uh, Spider-Man has been captured by Tombstone, the uh, shark guy that you see on the front at the top there. And... Uh, Tombstone is here to teach Spider-Man a lesson. I believe it's Miles Morales, but I'm not 100% sure on that because you do not see his face. Um, but I don't think it's Peter Parker. Um, yeah, and uh, it is. Uh, it kind of goes more to Tombstone's backstory um, than more than uh, uh, actual Spider-Man the comic itself. But there is definitely some cool Spider-Manage that happens throughout the comic. Uh, let's just say that Tombstone commits one of the cardinal bad guy sins, telling your goons to kill the hero and then walking out of the room. I wonder what could happen. It's a to-be-continued. Uh, maybe he Spider -Man's dies. Dead. He's maybe dead. Spider-Man's dead the last forever. Issue of Spider -Man. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Uh, tropes are tropes for a reason. I'm not gonna hate it too much. Yeah, I mean it has to happen. Uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers just came out. Uh, we've continued the story. Jason or uh, Rocky and uh, Matt are separated from the rest of the Rangers and are holding their own against a guy who is very powerful, and they both get the crap kicked out of them. And the Rangers tag in, show up, and this connects directly to the uh, Power Rangers that I reviewed two weeks ago because the ending also calls back to 
that character who I'm still not going to name, but their the, the very bad tragedy in their life that I'm surprised is in a Power Ranger comic. I'm gonna be real. Murder is yeah. not a thing in Power Rangers. Yeah. All right, and then for all you Fortnite fans, Fortnite, Fortnite! give me a Fortnite dance. Uh, yeah. So the Fortnite DC event was last year, towards the end of last year. Very popular. One of the more popular comics in the shop. Sold out basically instantly for almost all issues, especially issue one. Um, and this is issue one of Marvel Fortnite. Um, they actually give Fortnite lore. Which I don't know how to feel about. I haven't played Fortnite a whole lot, admittedly, but they give Fortnite lore. Like, why the Marvel characters are skins in the game is explained in this comic, which I don't know if I find really dumb or really funny. I'm still decided. Um, but either way, it is uh, definitely a very interesting read. Um, you get the code to unlock a unique uh, skin in the Fortnite game. Uh, you can only get from buying these comics. So if you are interested in that at all, I highly recommend picking up one of these, uh, even just as a collector's piece, honestly, uh, because these are going to fly off the shelves as soon as tomorrow. They're going to be gone. Um, speaking of Fortnite, just a heads up, we do have some of the second printings of the DC ones. Their codes are still redeemable, uh, available in store. If you want to pick up any of those, we ordered some just so that way you can get the codes. So my last comic for today... Fortnite dance! <laughs> I'm going to hit you in the mouth. So my last comic for today is the Savage Avengers number two. To be honest with y'all, I'm not a big fan of this issue. Uh, I thought it would be cool that they sent everybody back to Conan's time. So we got a little bit of... I thought we were going to get a change. More of the Sumerian comics stuff. Those were a little bit more adult. But like something that era... Um, you have Conan, Dagger, and Anti-Venom are separated from Cloak, Weapon H, and Black Knight. Uh, Anti-Venom goes kind of crazy because of the time travel thing. They split Cloak and Dagger? Yeah. So it's Cloak, Dagger? Yeah. That rolls off the tongue so much worse. Uh, and I love Fla Flash Thompson as a character. Uh, they... I, I don't know how I feel about this one. Uh, the Conan stuff is kind of, he's pay, asked to pay for some of his crimes that he did before he transported it ahead in time. I'm hoping it goes somewhere. Deathlock is still the main antagonist, and they do meet up with him. Weapon H and Daredevil do fight him. But we'll see how issue three goes. I die hard uh, Savage Avenger fans will like this. But for me, this issue is kind of slow. We're just going to be honest here. Next up, in the line of uh, Spider-Man and the Spider-Man adjacent characters getting their faces ripped off comics that covers it this week, uh, we have Flash Thompson as Venom. Uh, this is Flash Thompson going, I think, like very, very far into the future, uh, where Kang the Conqueror is doing his Kanging and his time traveling and his conquering. And uh, he bonds with a symbiote, and there is a bunch of other Kang goons that are hunting down symbiotes and also using some symbiotes as weapons I'm not gonna lie haven't been keeping up with this one particularly myself so i was a little confused but you don't need to be super caught up on exactly all the lore that's happening to know that there's some kick-ass fights in this comic um there's some funny references especially even to unexpectedly the venom 2 movie i think there's a line that's a reference to there to that in this book i don't know if that's just a venom line that the Venom 2 movie took as a reference in their movie, and then this comic is just referencing the previous comics, but to me it read like a Venom 2 reference line, which was very funny for me. Um, Kang is not as much conquering, like he's still conquering, he's Kang the Conqueror, he can't non-conquer, but he's not as much of a straight evil villain force that he is sometimes portrayed as. He is more of a teacher role in this comic, uh, eventually. But there's definitely some badass fights and some kick-ass scenes. Uh, and potentially a Venom 2 reference. So that's fun. All right, that's going to be our coverage for the comics of the week. As always, if you want to get in on any of these things, we offer a subscription program here. We have back issues in the back. And that's why they're in the back. That is why they're in the back. And we can try to complete stories. We can order anything that we, you want. We can try to get Omnibuy. Whatever you need. We want to be your one-stop shop for comics. And we will be seeing you guys next week, assuming there's no Memorial Day 2. Peace. <laughs> Take it easy, guys.